Hey folks, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Thanks for tuning in, appreciate it. Uh, we are going to have a quick look at uh, the new multi-star guiding in PHD2. And um, I know that there's been some videos done of this already. Uh, I didn't have a chance to get around to the multi-star guiding only because of the weather we've been having. Um, it's been over two months of snow and, and clouds. Uh, but I got a clear night tonight, so I just thought I'd put this out there uh, real quick and uh, give you guys uh, a little look at it. This is the uh, PHD2, the uh, Dev 3 version, so 269 Dev 3. And you can get that. If we go here, I'll just open up my browser. Uh, you can get that from their website, which is at openphdguiding.org under uh, Development Snapshots. And if you scroll down, you'll see uh, 269 Dev 3 released uh, January 3rd, and you can download for Mac or Windows. Now, you want to enable, you click on the brain here, and you'll want to enable uh, multi-star guiding uh, under the guiding tab. So I have it enabled here, and uh, so you just check it off and uh, leave everything else the same. This is my setup for my guide scope. Yours will look a little different, but the multi-star guiding uh, checkbox, make sure that's checked and um, leave everything else uh, the same and you're good to go. Uh, you can click OK. The only other thing that you might want to do is add uh, a dark frame library. Now, I've never used a dark frame library um, with my guiding, but in the case of PHD2 here, this, um, this new multi-star guiding, um, it might be advantageous only because, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this, but because the um, additional stars that are chosen for averaging the guiding um, can change and it could possibly latch on to a hot pixel or something like that when you don't want that. So um, all you have to do for darks, uh, creating darks in PHD2 is go up to the darks tab here, um, go to dark library, and it'll ask you a range of exposure times. Uh, typically I use two seconds. I rarely use one, but let's use one and we'll do two. And um, I'm gonna have it take five frames of each. You can increase that. You could set that to uh, 10 or 20, whatever you want. Five is fine. And then you can modify an existing dark library or you can create a new dark library. And you'll wanna create a new dark library, obviously, if you've never done it before, um, or you could update your uh, existing dark library if you have one. But you'd create a new dark library, uh, give it a, a name or something in the notes here, just so you recognize it, and you click Start. And PHD will basically take these dark frames. It'll ask you to cover the, uh, the guide scope, and uh, it'll take these frames, and that's it. You're good to go, because uh, what'll happen is it'll enable the use dark library and uh, that'll apply it out, apply the darks automatically to the uh, incoming uh, exposures. So what we are going to do here is we're just going to turn on the guiding and we've got a white screen. There we go. All right. So we've got some stars there. I'm going to slew the scope scope over to um, some stars just to show you the multi-star guiding. And um, this could really actually help quite a bit improve guiding. And uh, it might be something that you're interested in turning on. Um, for me, I've got pretty good polar alignment. So my guiding is not usually bad. Uh, but, you know, situations arise where, uh, you know, uh, when you're having to set up and tear down your gear, sometimes you just don't uh, get that, you know, the best possible polar alignment and this PHD2 multi-star guiding could possibly improve things for you. So if I uh, slew the telescope over to a star, I'm just gonna use Nina here. This is the latest build of Nina, um, the nightly version, I should say. This is version 1.11 nightly build 41. Um, these builds are changing rapidly. They're under heavy development. Um, it's not a final version of the uh, version 1.11, but um, it is a fully functioning uh, version. And like I said, you want to be aware that these are nightly builds and being currently worked on. So uh, keep it up to date and just be aware of that. If we go to the imaging tab, we can uh, select a star. So I'm gonna select Capella. Um, these are the stars that are available to us that we can see right now. I'm going to select Capella because it's in a good part of the sky for me. And I uh, just want to make sure that the uh, telescope is not parked and it's not. And we'll click Slew 2. 
And it's basically uh, going to slew the telescope, which it's doing right now. I just checked it on the, uh, the uh, security camera monitor and uh, it's slewing to Capella currently. It's uh, almost there and it's almost there. It'll tell us here too, it's saying it's slewing right now in the bottom left corner here. Um, and it should indicate that it uh, is now uh, reached that point because it's settling the mount. So I have it set to settle the mount for five seconds after it completes a slew. Um, if we just take a quick exposure here, I'll click here. I've got it set to a two second exposure and I just click to take that exposure. And there's Capella right there. Now you notice uh, the slew is pretty good. It's almost on Capella, but not quite. We can actually center on Capella if we wanted to by using the plate solving. And we just open the plate solving and we click the little play icon there, play button. And it'll begin to plate solve. So it's taking a 10 second exposure. That's what I have it set to do for plate solving. It's gonna take a 10 second exposure. Then it's gonna attempt to plate solve. So it's uh, telescope is not inside tolerance and it's re it's re slewed to the target and it's taking another image now. And this image should be uh, have Capella centered. Okay, looks like it's good to go. There it is, Capella is nicely centered and we got lots of nice stars to work with. Let's go back to our PhD2 here and we will turn on, well, we'll auto select a star first of all. So there's the square is the star that was auto selected and that's the primary star for guiding. All of the stars that you see, which are circled, um, those ones there are the additional stars, the multi stars, and they will be used to average the guiding. And it's as simple as that. Um, all you have to do is uh, click go and uh, you're off to the races with it. So uh, PhD2 will take care of the rest. Nothing, uh, nothing complicated about it in terms of getting it up and running and, and uh, working, um, but it should actually help improve your guiding. So give it a try and let me know in the comments if you've uh, tried the multi-star guiding and if it's working for you, if you've noticed an improvement or not. Um, I know some people have said about reducing or increasing the speed of the, uh, I should say maybe increasing the speed of the exposure. So for going from, um, in my case, it would be going from two seconds to one second. They've tried one second exposures with the multi-star guiding. Um, and they've, they've said that this has worked well for them. Um, I don't like taking exposures personally. I don't like taking guiding exposures too rapidly because you can start chasing seeing and that can actually work against you in terms of having good guiding. Sometimes it's better off to um, have a little bit of a relaxed period between exposures so that you're not chasing seeing and the mount isn't um, oscillating back and forth trying to keep this star centered. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like and comment if you can. If you uh, are a current subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Thumbs up to you. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow. Um, hit the bell notification for new videos, and I will see you again on another clear night. Um, so for now, take care and clear skies, everyone.